Alright guys, what is going on everyone? My name is Machine Gun Hunt here, and today I am trying something new here. A uh, little, little bit of a shout out with uh, Nick uh, Gloucester, you know, Final Fantasy Nick. Uh, he actually gave me an idea to use OBS as a way of uh, doing live streams. And while I was doing that, I figured out a way to record stuff through my uh, PC, which is awesome. So that gives me way more things to talk about uh, through this channel. So... It's a little bit of a test, so if there's anything going on, just let me know in the comic section, you know, ways I can improve. So let's just go ahead and get started. So main thing I want to talk about here is uh, the TWAB uh, this week at Bungie. Uh, this is the uh, November, uh, I'm sorry, uh, October 8th of 2020. And it's just talking about, you know, loot, uh, new exotics has been go uh, coming in. Uh, with uh, the new expansion Beyond Light, you know, there's also some stuff like you know how to get um, some exclusive weapons uh, from Festival of the Lost, yada yada. Uh, there's actually been some controversy with that, but we're not talking about it right now. Big thing we're talking about here is mod modifications, mod mods. <laughs> so uh, this is what they're going through right now. Uh, with within over a month of from Beyond Light, uh, 30 days to be precise, we have quite a bit of cover between now and then. From sandbox updates to various uh, economies are being updated. Uh, sandbox has always been a hot topic of discussion, and today we're driving into a deeper into ways to customize your, customize your gameplay experience uh, through armor mods, which is pretty easy because, you know, me personally, you know, you have seen some more uh, mod videos coming into this channel recently because I just love mods so much. And ever since this came out, it's just a godsend right here. We're mostly going to talk about armor mods here. Um, they're not going to be much about weapon mods, which I'm kind of sad about because weapon mods are pretty good. It's just I want to see more uh, perks that you can get for weapon mods. Like, you know, maybe getting bonus damage to certain enemies, of course, which we're probably going to talk about later on. Uh, so first off right here, first thing we've got to talk about is energy type requirements. So as you probably know already, um, depending on what perks that you want for your mods, like let's say if you have a hand cannon loader, uh, you know, you have a void that requires a void uh, type of requirement. Uh, so they are going to discuss that. So uh, all the weapons are or ornated armor mods, a hand cannon loader, fusion rifle, finder, uh, etc., have been changed to be any energy type. Ooh. That's actually really good. So, that's going to give you lots of changes. Uh, as a, a result of the above change, all are charged with light mods now activate their second perk if you have any other arc mod equipped with the same armor piece. Or if you have any other arc charged with light mod socket to any other armor piece you are wearing. Okay, so. Two big things are coming here. Uh, it's not required. So basically the mods aren't going to have any energy types anymore. So that's actually really huge. Like I could think of uh, some gauntlets that you can have a, uh, let's say, auto rifle, off auto rifle loader. And then you can have a sniper rifle loader right there. So it's not only uh, loading for certain weapons that you have. And then if you want to choose a different weapon, then you got to use a different, like, uh, you know, energy uh, gauntlet to use the reload but you can have both of them at once which is very good uh, I could see several ways now that you, this could be used as a way to uh, make whatever build you want uh, you get a lot more freedom with that and uh, most importantly uh, that's gonna be a lot you don't need to use as much uh, armor uh, pieces so that part of the video where I say you have at least three like armor pieces uh, for each energy category, uh, it's not necessary anymore. So you can just have one gauntlet, and then you can have like all sorts of ways to n customize your build, and you just need that one gauntlet. So that is excellent, excellent news. That's definitely going to save a lot of space for the vault. So that gives me the excuse to erase some stuff, actually. Uh, so instead of focusing on like energy you can just focus on st roll stat rolls and you can just focus on that one arm armor piece that will help you out so excellent excellent news that's like one of the best choices i've seen where right there uh so it also t talks about like uh arc charge light mods uh so those are like charged with light mods that if you get you can get additional perk if the uh 
if it's like a certain element so there's like lots of uh, mods that if you have an arc arc if you have arc energy type on it then you get an additional perk within the mod within it which is actually really cool I have messed with it a little bit I just want to mess with it more so uh, now that's not necessary anymore so you could it could be still equipped and any arc mod equipped on the same armor piece uh, so now activate their second part if you have any other arc mod equipped on the same armor piece okay so that either means that you don't need to have an arc uh, archetype anymore or you could just simply have another arc mod and it will activate it so you could probably use like a shotgun auto loader and then you could have that particular mod and it will activate it which is pretty good like really good stuff right there all right, so developer commentary. Uh, removing the energy type requires from weapon focus mods have been a considerate piece of community feedback since Armor 2.0 launch. I mean, I haven't really mind it as long as they have like three pieces, you can do all, that, all sorts of stuff. But I do understand, like you know, now that you're getting rid of that, there's gonna be more creativity with uh, certain builds. So there's definitely gonna be uh, some good stuff there. So there's probably gonna be some good balancing stuff too. All right, so second thing right here, enhancement mod rebalancing. So all mods that have been enhanced version of that mod, enhanced hand cannon reloader, uh, so that's gonna be a, probably a big focus right here, uh, have had the base mod's efficiency increase to match that of the enhanced version of the mod. Having it. All mods that have an enhanced version of that mod have had base mod's efficiency increase Ooh, so does that mean if you just have a regular uh, hand cannon loader, so it's basically be as fast as an enhanced hand cannon loader? That's really good. That's amazing. Okay, so basically you're using less energy to get the same results as an enhanced hand cannon loader. That is fantastic. Wow. Okay, so not only you have, you don't need any energy. You also have, you don't need the energy to use certain mods, but you also could use the best stuff with less energy. So you're, you're just going to have loads of uses and uh, room to get whatever you want and what's the best uses for it. So again, that is an excellent, excellent result. So these enhanced mods have been uh, de-precapted. I can't I can't say words <laughs> and the base mods energy costs have been adjusted upwards slightly okay but are still lower than the equivalent enhanced mods okay gotcha so it's not gonna be as low as you thought it would but it will still be low which is excellent so I think uh, for enhanced hand cannon mod it'll be like four or five and then regular one is like three so it'll probably be around like the four category which is pretty good uh, I do enjoy that a lot. So it's going to be lower, more room for that. Excellent job. And good job, Bungie. <laughs> uh, some mods have been moved to different slots to create more competition for mod slots across armor pieces. For example, the fast and ready mods have been moved to arm sockets. Okay, so fast and ready. Is that like a class item mod? Because the thing about... Uh, Armor mods is with uh, especially with gauntlets. Uh, it's its main focus is reload speed, and uh, melee and uh, grenade like you know bells and whistles. Like a prior example is fastball it makes you throw your grenade farther. That's on the gauntlet right there. So uh, fast and ready. Uh, it's going to be moved to arm sockets. So there might be some other possibilities. There might be some other mods maybe in the class item category. That might go to arm arms, and then maybe there's some arm slots that goes down to class item as well. I think that's gonna be the most changes there because the arm slot and the uh, the class item do have similar abilities in that point of view. Uh, so who knows? Maybe there might be some good abilities for that. All right. So develop commentary. Uh, we consistently see feedback that players often don't start feeling the impact mods until they have the enhanced mods. I can attest to that. Unless you have like two pieces of the mod, like it's not really worth it. So either have an enhanced mod or two sockets, and it's worth it. Uh, so to reserve to resolve both issues, we decided to raise the floor on the effectiveness of all mods to the point where players are more likely to feel the impact uh, to deprecate. Uh, the two tiers of mods. Uh, we should be having two different mods in the same category, so the hand cannon loader and shotgun loader socketed at the same time, more appealing than it was previously. 
that is true uh, actually that is true so you basically if you have like a shotgun loader and a hand cannon loader you basically have uh, an enhanced uh, hand cannon loader and a shotgun hand uh, enhanced loader so if it's just regular then it's gonna increase your speed for all that stuff not to mention uh, you can have two like sniper rifle reloaders for agonizing burden for example and that could be a lot more effective for that so yeah, it's going to just stack up, and it will be uh, a better result for all the mods. Which, it, it's, it could be overpowered, but hey, I like overpowered. <laughs> um, where players often need to double stack the same mod to feel they're getting the benefit. Yeah, agreed. Uh, in essence, we're enhanced mods cheaper and accessible and getting and duplicating lesser mods. Okay, so basically they're making enhanced mods into regular mods, so... Wait, are, is there going to be like enhanced hand cannon loader? It's going to be like double enhanced? <laughs> that would be really cool. Okay, so mo raid mods. Uh, so, only experience I have with raid mods is with the Leviathan as well as the Last Wish. I haven't played like the other stuff like uh, Garden Salvation, which I heard is a great raid. I'll uh, we'll probably do that later on. Uh, starting in Season 12, Last Wish, Gar Garden Salvation, and upcoming Beyond Light raid armors will drop with a fifth dedicated ar armor mod socket that is exclusively for the mods related to the raid okay so uh currently with legendary pieces there's there is four mod slots so uh like we said before the first one is like made for like armor boosts uh like you know for discipline intellect uh resilience that sort of thing uh, the two uh the next two is with uh you know extra mods like you know hand cannon reloader just like we're talking about and then the third one is just charged with light as well as other like raid mods so basically what's happening here is that they're separating the charge with light mods and the raid mods so that means according to my calculations <laughs> uh you're going to have charge with light mods and raid mods in the same item and that is going to be ridiculous because there's going to be there's some mods in raids that are just totally worth it. You know, a good example is uh, there's one mod where it increases your uh, heavy weapon uh, damage by 15% in Leviathan. So I can have that as well as using a um, a charge of light mod. It gives me enhanced uh, firing, which is a increase to additional 20%, which that's a lot of damage, guys. That is a lot of damage. So, yeah, uh, that's going to be loads of damage. Optimal DPS, Dedal will like that a lot. Uh, so, last switch in Garden Salvation armor requires season 12 would not have deducted armor socket, but is still able to use the mods related to that raid in the new Legacy mod socket. So, what I'm guessing is any taken mods from last switch. Ooh, hang on a second. Okay, so let's break this down first. So, basically... Uh, if you're using Leviathan Raid Armor, and then the fifth socket is, is specifically made for that, uh, piece. So, what's probably, uh, understand, what I'm understanding is that if you have Leviathan uh, Raid Armor, it's only gonna have perks for that particular raid. And then if it's like Last Wish, then you can only use mods that's made for that particular raid. Okay, and that's the same thing for all the other raids. So... I guess that makes it so that it's, it's more essential to get all the armor pieces so you can take advantage of all the mods that you collected from the raids. Either that, or you could just use like a Leviathan uh, piece from like a Last Wish piece, which doesn't make sense, but if that's there, that's good. But if it's not, I don't totally understand that. But then there's also this one thing here. Uh, Anti-Taken mods from Last Wish will only function in Last Wish raid. Anti-Hive mods from the Leviathan raid will be uh, deprecated and then anti fallen raid monsters to the patch have been deprecated. Okay, so that means they're gone. So either that or it's just simply put, they're only going to wit to work in their uh particular um in their particular raids. Ooh. Okay, that's actually bad news. Um what that means for the people who've been hunting for like the taken damage uh, perk for their weapons, basically that's not going to be uh, useful anymore. So you know there've been, been some predictions where people 
should hunt for taking raid mods because uh, it will help in the long run, especially against like the enemies later on in the future, which is most likely going to be taken because there's like Sabathun and stuff like that. So once you get that mod, it's going to be useful. But basically, Bungie is saying that this isn't going to be useful anymore because it's only going to be available for Last Wish, which is a big bummer. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this, but from what I understand, um, I guess <laughs> the only people that get hurt by this is for those that literally grind each week trying to get the Taken mods that they want, and now it's useless now. I mean, if they're doing Last Wish, then sure, it's still pretty useful, but man, I gotta feel bad for those guys who, ha who just got it like, literally like last week, and now Bungie's saying it's not useful anymore. At least outside of the raid. So, uh, yeah, big bummer there. Um, this is probably made for balancing reasons, simply because you'd, instead of getting like three or four, uh, you know, different mods that gives you increased percentage on damage against like you know take in or bosses, then you're not gonna get that. Instead, you're going to have it so where it's like you know, uh, two or three. But that's okay. Um. If you guys have like a weapon that gives you enhanced damage towards like a uh, freaking like boss or uh, you know wreck and file enemies, then you shouldn't have a problem there. You just need to you won't have as much freedom with that. So it's not the end of the world, guys. It's it's exclusively available. Um, yeah. Uh, this, the commentary here is the decision to give raid armor. Uh, for fifth slot socket, which is really good, solely for its raid mods, should not only make the raid armors more valuable reward. That is true. Uh, that that doesn't give me a reason why to delete it now because one, I can probably get higher rolls because it's raid armor, uh, for like you know stats, but also I can get that fifth slot. And I can make the uh you know activities more easier, and then I could just farm for the weapons slash armor that I want. Uh, but also should be composite for restriction for the usage of raid mods with the activity uh, to use that armor to craft your build both in and out of the raid. Yeah, so it's kind of like Monster Hunter. Like, you know how in the game Monster Hunter, uh, the let's say you're fighting like a Tigrex or something like that, and the armor is made for a Tigrex. So when you're hunting the monster now it's gonna be a lot easier it's gonna be like that for the raid so once you get all the armor mods and like the raid armor then it's gonna be a lot easier to do those activities which probably gives you the rewards that you actually want and then you can mix match mix and match your sets uh, for particular uses that you want for your uh, playthrough which is really good um you know that definitely is a little bit more monster hunter vibes but i love monster hunter and like you know that's definitely a, a good result from that but i know some people will be angry about those type of things uh regarding the deprecation of the anti-hive and fallen mods which i probably don't understand because there have been more hive and fallen activity recently and the restriction of anti-taken mods to last wish, there is something we have our eye for a while. Uh, we consistently get feedback that functions, uh, specific mods are highly unbalanced outside of content that are tend to work in the raids or any sort of activities. Uh, because these are useful for any instant of a combatant race, activity designers and sandbox designers are consistently having to w be aware on how these mods would impact. I actually... Uh, a previous video was talking commentating and as well as some balance issues uh, with uh, certain mods certain weapons uh, certain like pinnacle uh, stuff like mountaintop is a perfect example of this where um, the devs have to develop raids or bosses be with keeping in mind the arsenal that the guardian actually has right now and this is not only what we have right now it's just also what we are going to have in the future so you know it's <laughs> it's kind of like pokemon so you know you can just get all your team that you want or you could just simply trade in uh something that you had from like a previous game it'll just absolutely destroy everything that the developers actually try to make a challenge for so uh that's probably the best example i could think of but i do understand the mentality uh, that's why pinnacle weapons aren't going to be as useful as later on uh simply because of balancing issues so you know stuff like uh you know the wind windigo is not going to be as useful because the light level is not going to be as powerful and they do have to keep that in mind 
Uh, so, proven problematic in Gambit. <laughs> that is true. Um, the Taken mod is totally overpowered because, like, let's say you're playing a sentry role, you can just have your uh, Taken damage mod uh, for your weapons, then it's just make it so that, you know, um, blockers are, are essentially like butter. You can just get rid of them no problem. And, yeah, like, I'm glad that they actually got rid of that, which is going to balance Gambit a whole bunch more. And uh, reduce the challenge of dungeons. That is also true. Uh, with the raids that provide the source. I actually just finished the Prophecy Dungeon. It was really fun. Very difficult. I could definitely see it's a lot easier if you had that, uh, you know, taken uh, damage mod right there. Uh, with the raids providing sources with these mods giving to DVC provides. Uh, we have the opportunity to remove these mods from long reaching consequences. Which is great. I, I can definitely see the improvements there and uh, more balancing. I think it's probably necessary, especially with Gambit, uh, which is designed to balance with its anti taken in its mind, it will remain be part of the game and continue to reward uh, players with its mods, which, is, which I'm glad that they will have that. That was the purpose of it. Uh, however, to prevent the far reaching consequences mentioned above, we are. Uh, aligning these mods with the other raid mods and making them function only in the raid that they drop from. Uh, it's a positive response from more mechanic focused mods to search just garden salvation. Future raids will have mods more like these. Okay, so it's gonna be like that for uh, the rest of basically Destiny existence. So the new next raid for Beyond Light, they're going to have mods specifically for that particular raid. Okay, understandable. Combat mods, all armor, release them Beyond Light and 12. All Last Wish Garden Salvation Armor acquired starting from Season 12. All armor and pieces already, including those possessed by players, will have a com combat style mod socket. Um, this socket will accept all charge of light and war mind cells. Okay. Ooh, wait a second. So, they're giving exotic armor an extra slot as well. So, it's not only the raid of armor pieces, it's also going to be exotic armor pieces as well so I could put enhanced uh, high energy fire on like my Nizrak Sin for example that's really good that's gonna give me a lot more space this is basically this is gonna be more freedom for mods which is excellent I am a big fan of that so all armor 2.0 acquired from season 8 to 11 with their seasonal mod sockets replaced with a single unified legacy mod socket that can socket all charge with light mods, all war mind cell mods, all nightmare hunt mods, all garden of salvation, and all last wish mods. Okay, so yeah, basically all armor within uh, what we have right now is just gonna have the fourth slot, and then all exo exotic armor pieces as well as extra armor that we will get from last wish garden salvation probably leviathan as well we will get that fifth slot so there is a reason there's still a reason to get the uh, armor pieces that we have today so in order to take advantage of what we're getting right now so the armor that you currently have right now let's say you have a full raid set of garden salvation uh, i still need to farm for garden salvation in season 12 in order to take advantage of that fifth slot right there so okay uh, that gives us more uh, reason to do the raids that we're doing right now so that we can get more cool armor, which I do like. There's definitely good, some good builds for that. So min-maxing, am I right? And then, uh, yeah, um, that's about it. That is a lot of stuff to go by. So basically, um, energy stuff is gone now, which I am super glad about. Raid mods, they're getting a fifth slot with the armor pieces, which is great. Um, Taken, high, fallen, whatever type of mods that are available, uh, they're basically not going to be as useful anymore because, you know, it's only uh, locked into a particular activity. You know, Last Wish, the Taken damage mod, for example. And then, um, Exotic Gear is going to have an additional slot with their, uh, you know, with uh, war mine uh, gear as well as uh, seasonal mods and like charge of life mods, which is great. And then uh, the current armor that we have right now with raids, it's not going to be as useful because it doesn't have that fifth slot. So yeah, uh, overall <laughs> probably like an eight out of ten from all of the uh, mod changes, which is great. 
uh, simply because there might be some stuff that you know you might uh, don't want to disappear but at the same time I do understand like the balance issues especially with gambits uh, so yeah good basically all good calls from Bungie with uh, mod changes uh, I am really excited for the new changes that's going to happen and that is probably going to be the first video that's going to come out as soon as Beyond Light returns. And then I'm probably going to make some builds that will probably help out with some gameplay. Plus, there's going to be like some new mods with like the subclasses even, which is, yeah, going to be ridiculous. <laughs> Basically, this channel is going to be a mod-based channel for Destiny. And I am super excited about that. Uh, but yeah, guys, uh, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure you go ahead to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And comment below on what do you think about all these things here. I'm definitely excited about these changes. Uh, I do need to theory craft all this stuff right here. And then I'm probably going to make some builds before even the expansion comes out. So uh, thank you guys for watching. God bless. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.